Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods back again with our review of the Epax E10 resin printer. First off, I just want to say my apologies for the disaster of work. I'm still trying to figure out camera angles and things like that uh, because I've moved my entire setup from that side of the room to this side, so just wanted to get that out of the way. Plus, my workshop is always a mess anyways, but it's really a disaster right now. Anyway, let's get on to our review of the Epax E10. So, uh, I've been kind of working my way with uh, Epax for about a year now. Uh, they sent me some resin first off, and then um, they ended up sending me a Epax E10 along with an Epax E6, which you guys can't see, it's just out of sight there. Um, that is an upcoming video. We'll do some unboxing and everything like that. But right now we're talking about the E10, the medium size or big boy of the uh, um, the E series, at least. So, um, what makes this printer better than the others? So, some some first initial things when I did the unboxing, I noticed that this printer is a lot heavier duty. Now, I'm not saying that it's got quality parts on it or anything like that because I haven't really looked inside of it. It's not something I normally do. As long as it's working, there's no need for me to go inside of it. Um, it's pretty basic. It's got a sheet tube board. You can tell that right off the bat. So the, you don't really have to look inside of it to know what's going on. Um, you can see everything through the LCD screen for the most part. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, you know, going back to the whole weight thing, I did notice that you know, comparing it to my Elegoo Saturn, my Calent, um S400, my uh, Saint Smart Kumitsu, my Sonic Mighty 4K, it is considerably um, heavier. And I'll even throw in the Hell at Sky because that's that's a pretty heavier printer, but it's probably a good five to ten pounds heavier than my other printer. So just think about that when you guys are purchasing this printer, that it is a um, heavier side printer, um, which is kind of nice because usually these are really like cheap uh, bases and, you know, like just cheap metal basically wrapped around the entire frame of the, uh, the printer itself. But this actually feels pretty solid. Like, yeah, it's probably the same type of thing, but it's definitely thicker. You can just tell by tapping on it that's a, it's a thicker metal so um also the reason why it's probably a lot heavier is if you guys may or may not know there is an upgrade or going to be an upgrade um for this printer so as of as it stands right now um it comes with a 4k 8.9 inch um lcd screen that basically allows you to get printing on a smaller 5.5 6 inch 2k screen resolution on a medium sized printer i know i'm probably going to get you know bantered about it well what is the meaning of 4k well that just means that it prints at 4k resolution but when you pack that out to an 8.9 inch screen the pixel per square inch actually comes in a little bit under a 2k 5.5 or 6 inch um screen resin printer so when you the bigger you go the more resolution you need to basically compensate for that loss of resolution going bigger so with that being said they do have an upgrade that's a 10.1 inch i believe looking at it right now yes it's a 10.1 inch 5k screen which that will allow you to have a larger screen and again you'll probably print a little bit better than a 2k resolution screen but again, there's no true like 4K or 5K. Um, it's, I don't really want to say it's marketing, but it, it kind of is in a way. Um, it's just something to grab people's attention. Not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because you are getting an upgrade in a way. Um, so like if we were to compare this to my Webox Lite 215 that has a 10 inch screen and this one had a 10 inch screen, this one would definitely print a better uh, print on it because it's a it would be a 5K resolution, whereas my Wii box is only a 2K resolution. So I'm actually printing less than um, probably 1080, actually, uh, when it's all said and done. But 
that printer is specifically used for large projects that don't require high detail. Um, not the not saying that it won't do high detail because it's still a resin printer, but <clears throat> that's besides the point. So let's get back to the uh, EPACs here before I get off track too much. But um, so a couple things that I'm kind of so-so about. Um, as you guys may or may not know, I'm not a big fan of the uh, pop pop off top. Uh, I really wish I had the one with the hood, but as I was just perusing the uh, epax3d.com website, um, I did notice that they have the, I guess you can call it upgrade or swappability to have the bolted on um, hood with the door, which I think I would prefer, uh, at least for my setup that's over there just because it, it makes it easier. Um, I know there were some issues with the VAT, you know, kind of being in there. Um, so I have to look in that before I decide I want to pull the trigger on that or not. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see about that. Uh, some other things that I, I'm not a big fan of, but I understand why they're going that way. And um, basically, I, I understand that they will let excuse me, last a little bit longer. So, um, and that is the plastic vats. Now, when I say that, it sounds terrible saying it in that sense, but these are more like molded, injection molded. And you can kind of tell because if you worked in any type of plastic industry or you've seen anything that's, that's molded or, um, uh, you know, injection molded, in any way shape or form you can tell like the way that it's cut the way that the finish comes out these are these are pretty much raw material uh, when it comes out here so I'm pretty sure these just come right off the uh, production line as is you know they're not painted in any way or shape uh, or form which again it's not the end of the world it's a vat it's gonna be dirty it doesn't need anything fancy on it so um, the other thing is you know the the top or build plate of the top of it is all plastic as well so I'm a little concerned with over time that the screws might you know strip loose or you know damage the build plates um, holder and basically come loose in some way shape or form so but again I know that there is currently pre-orders going on uh, for a metal build plate that you can buy for that and I have heard that the, uh, I believe it's the Epax X10, uh, those metal vats will actually fit this. Now, going into the whole vat thing, one of my largest issues with this printer, and it seems to be across the board with a lot of people, is the, uh, the little knobs on the side of the vats. So most of you guys, if you have resin printers, you know that when you unscrew those screws, there's usually the knob and then there's a long screw attached to it. Um, well, this isn't the case with the EPAX models and I'm, I think it's actually all the EPAX models if I'm not mistaken, I, but you know, definitely this one. So I, I could be wrong about that, but definitely this one. So um, with this one, when you unscrew the knob, it's just the top of the knob. So there is a slight hack where you can open this up and put a different type of screw in and get that all situated. So you can modify it in some way. I personally don't think you should be needing to modify a printer uh, out of factory, but something like that is probably going to be a must for me um, soon down the road. So I will, uh, I will show off some pictures and do like a little how-to if there's not one online. I'm sure there is already, but um, maybe we'll do a quick video on it and uh, basically show people how to uh, do that little swap because I, I personally like that a little bit better because I just have a fear that I'm going to drop these little uh, screws inside the vat and I know that's happened to tons of people already. So I understand the fear about that. So anyway, uh, carrying on, um, the, the plastic holder for the build plate I tend to have an issue every once in a while getting that build plate off there. It's not necessarily a bad thing because that means that it's on there, it's good, it's firm. But the problem is, is when I get it, try to take it off, I'm worried that I'm going to like take it off, it's going to uh, stop, and then I'm going to put some more pressure on it, 
and then I'm just going to drop the whole plate or something's going to happen like that. So um, that's one of my biggest fears about that. So I might end up like sanding down the sides or something like that and see if, you know, maybe I can loosen that up a little bit because that, that's, you know, something I just, I worry about a lot. So those are two things with the printer that I have uh, at least experienced that I, I know are going to be future issues and consistent issues that are just going to bug me. So uh, I will be ending up changing those out. Um, so, but other than that, <clears throat> this printer has been printing amazingly. So um, obviously we do have some prints on this right now. You guys can kind of see them hanging down here. This is off of a, uh, a file that customers sent to me to have printed uh, called the Hag House. Um, I'm not too familiar with miniatures and things like that, um, but I know that's that's a big uh, big name at least in the miniature community. Now there are several other parts of it over on my workstation there, uh, you know, drying and and um, basically letting the the resin drip off of it before I put it in the uh, the wash and cure that I have set up over here, which I got to move over there. Um, so I don't really have any prints to show off per se, but I can take off the build plate and let you guys see what's on there. Um, but again, this, this one kind of failed a little bit, and that's more or less because the resin that I'm using is a little bit older, and I'm mixing resins, um, so that's never really a good thing. Um, but again, these are more or less structural parts, so they're not really going to be a major issue. So we'll just do a vac clean function, and we'll lift everything up and get it all cleaned and set that to go for the next batch. Um, I think I'm like probably three stages out of six, I think there is, uh, done with the Hag House. So we still got a little while to go. It's just been printing them every once in a while, but it's been printing back to back um, when, I, when I did do it. So it's not like consistently every single day I've been printing, printing, printing. No, it's usually like a day then uh, the next day I get to the next one and so on and so forth. So, um, But yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, one of the issues, obviously, I have because I live in Illinois and for some reason, at least in my room, I have a lot of static electricity. Um, I tend to get an issue where the hood has a static issue. So when the build plate rises and there's resin dripping off of it, tends to stick right to the inside of the uh, the the pop tops on every single one that I've had. So it might just be because I don't have anything on the floor. I don't have anything to like ground that um, that uh, static electricity. I don't know. Um, but I, usually I just keep a bottle of uh, static guard by my side and I'll just spray it on the inside from now on. So uh, that way I don't have a huge mess because uh, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. On this side, it's a huge mess. Basically, this hood is ruined. So that's one of the, the other reasons why I was uh, thinking about getting the hood. So um, as of making this video right now on the EPAX website, these are going for $699, which puts that right below the Anycubic Mono X on the cheaper side. Now, they are a little bit more expensive uh, every now and then. But last I looked, they were just around that similar price range or just a little bit above it. Um, obviously, this is more expensive than the Sonic Mighty 4K and the Elegoo Saturn and the Calent S500, uh, which are all in the same um, area as this. And, um, you know, the LD-006 from Creality... I believe is priced right around the same so but I can't really speak for that because I don't I don't really have much information about it so um, but yeah com just doing comparison it's kind of like right right at the top but not at the top so it is a little bit more expensive but again the reason for that being more expensive is you are paying for a machine that has the ability to go from a medium size printer to a large size printer down the road. Now obviously that does require you swapping out the board, the LCD along with the um, special like modular enclosure that they have for it. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's not 
it's not a huge, you know, thing, but it might be a little bit more technical than some people would like to, uh, like to deal with. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to cross those stages once, uh, once those are released and get out there. I think they're just starting to release the 5K 10-inch screen. So, uh, so that's one thing to weigh into you looking into a medium-sized printer is that this can go from a medium to a large in that short amount of time. But obviously, you're going to be paying probably, you know, at least... I would say upwards of at least two hundred dollars, but if they can keep it under one hundred and fifty, that's that's great, because you're still way under most ten-inch screen printers um, that are on the market. Uh, usually, ten-inch screen printers they start at about a thousand dollars for you know a fairly good one uh, that would be comparable to this. So, um, so yeah. Uh, some some things I wanted to tackle about concerns that some some people might ask me. Uh, I know already is screen um, matrix issues or matrix LED issues with the screen. Uh, I do not have a box with the white sticker on it. Uh, supposedly, Epax had an issue where the LED matrix was causing lines just like the Elegoo Saturn uh, was having for the longest time. They still have that issue. I have a newer Saturn, and while it's a lot less than it used to be, you can still see that there's an issue there. So, uh, But I have a feeling that, you know, though they're, um, the new models are, are fixed with that. So, um, But this model is definitely a newer style model, I guess you could say. Um, I want to say anything after November from what I remember seeing on, you know, the Facebook groups and everything is that anything after November, you basically um, need to make sure that you have a white sticker on it and that'll let you know that EPAX has went through and, um, you know, checked all the screens and made sure that they are wor in proper working order. So that goes into a whole other transition of, why should you choose EPAX over everybody else? Well, one of the reasons why I always wanted to try and get an EPAX since the X1 was announced was that I heard nothing but good things about the company in general as well as their customer service. Now, one major flaw of 3D printing um, manufacturers everywhere, anyone you can name off the top of your head, they have so-so uh, customer service or non-existent. That's kind of how it is. There's never been a consistent like, these people were great. They always fixed my problem. With EPAX, that's all I ever hear about is like, these guys told me to do this. They told me to do that. We didn't fix the issue. They told me to send the unit out and they can have it fixed. So with that, that is amazing customer service. Plus on top of it, you're supporting a, uh, an American company. So while, yeah, these are Chinese made, obviously, uh, the company is based in North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, you know, that's, that's just kind of nice that you're knowing that you're supporting a small local business, um, or at least local to anybody living in North Carolina. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's always a, a number one check mark on my list is, who can I support here in the States, regardless if they're importing Chinese stuff or not, who can I support doing that? So um, that's always the number one thing on, on my books, at least. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge of, you know, how you want to do that. But uh, let's uh, let's show off these prints here and uh, see how they are, and then we'll wrap up this review here. So you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about, where it kind of sticks. See how it kind of like stops, it sticks, and then you got to kind of wiggle it off. So here's some prints. I know it's kind of hard to see with the light and the white color and everything, but these are very, very nice prints. As you can see, the holes came out very, very well. Everything printed exactly the way that it was supposed to. But like I said, obviously failures happen. So there are some failures in this vat. Again, like I said, we'll just do a vat clean and we'll clean them all up and get them out of there. So, um, but yeah, for the most part, 
it's been an, uh, a pretty good printer. Um, besides my little gripes that it might just be my issues with it, with, you know, the plastic parts and the, the screw and things like that, it's a pretty solid printer besides those. So if we were to upgrade the, um, the build plate to an all-metal one, and upgrade the VAT to an all-metal one. I think this would be a, uh, a very, very good printer. And obviously that would put it on the X10 side um, because that's, that's what really makes the difference between the E series and the X series is you have consumer printers and you have dental printers. Not saying that these won't be consumer printers, the X series, um, but they're more meant for dental side. So they're meant to be workhorses nonstop. And again, not to say that this won't be a workhorse in the same manner, um, because more or less they have the same or similar parts. It's just the fact that, you know, when you're printing on a uh, industrial or dental printer, um, there's just that little extra level of, of um, easeability that you know that if you hit print and go, it's going to come out great. Whereas this, you know, failures happen. Um, not saying, again, that failures can't happen on a dental, but it's it's a lot less in my experience, regardless of how you messed it up, than you are here, where you have more of a mess up. So it's kind of strange how that is. It's, it's a whole other thing that we can get into, but that's just my experience with, uh, you know, my dental printers compared to my normal consumer printers um so yeah anyway um that's pretty much all i got for you guys if you got any questions comments concerns go ahead and leave them down below if you guys like the video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and uh yeah that's pretty much it until next time happy printing